All right, we'll move on to reports and communications. Uh, we'll start off with Council Member Espindola, please. You started off with me this time. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on the list. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> So um, in the last uh, several weeks, I, uh, as I mentioned, um, I think our last city council uh, participated in the regional water author uh, authority, yes. Um, and so I'm part of, and I look at Diana because Diana and I are together on, on the um, committees or the larger committee. And so I participated in the advocacy um, in the state and uh, meeting and then um, the uh, federal affair um, meeting as well. And we had a couple of meetings. I participated in two. They had several with um, uh, U.S. Uh, Senate uh, and um, state and federal uh, council people, uh, excuse me, Congress, uh, to discuss the issues of uh, regional water and the concerns in our area. And so I was able to lead the committee um, to um, start off the, the conversations. Um, we met virtually with uh, the U.S. Uh, Senate uh, Padilla's office, uh, his chief legislative staff. And in that, we were talking about the concerns of water and the impact of drinking water, the impact of um, agriculture and water, um, the impact of cities and the rates and et cetera. Um, was he, uh, from my understanding, this was the first meeting I participated, um, RWA, this is actually their first year launching into doing these um, uh, government affairs meetings with um, different uh, elected folks in the feds and in the state. And um, that was one meeting I participated. I also participated um, in the meeting with Congressman Garamende. Um, he actually uh, was present in that meeting, so we had a nice discussion with him. Uh, he is very uh, um, in tune to the infrastructure needs. We talked about all those areas that we just briefly kind of summarized, the roads, the, the water, the treatment, um, transportation, air quality. It was, a, it, it was a gamut of multiple conversations of, of needs um, within the area of water. And we talked about sites, reservoir, the importance of sites, reservoir, and that we really need to uh, build it, not keep pushing that down the road, um, because that's surface water that, that we all need up in the Northern California, the, um, uh, and Congressman Garamendi is very supportive of that. We also talked about um, at that time was they were negotiating the infrastructure bill with President Biden and um, within the, um, the team of, of, of Senate that he was meeting with. And so the discussion about ground well, wells and the infrastructure of ground wells was discussed. And um, I, I said to Congressman Gary Mende, Yuba City needs $9 million to fix our ground well infrastructure. And um, he nodded. He goes, I will see how we can help. And I don't know if that's just a nice gesture, but we keep moving forward and um, bringing up that $9 million. Within um, the Regional Water Authority, we've had discussions of, of the region's needs of their water within Folsom um, and, um, and in the Sacramento. And we recognize that, uh, thankfully, our uh, underwater situation seems to be at a, at a, a good place for us. But uh, the concern that I've also heard from um, ag community that I'm um, connected with is the aspect if there is a continuing drought for the following year, then how is that going to impact um, the, the growth of, of or limiting of growth? And I think the mayor's presented some of that information about the limiting of deciding not to plant or plant certain things and how that affects um, the economy. So we had a, a long conversation about that with um, U.S. Senators Padilla's staff and Congressman Garamende. So we had a full 30 minutes with both of them, and it was um, well and uh, received and very productive, and they went on to meet with the others. And we had a debrief um, with the committees on both, and um, we, we have a plan of action to, to, to go back and do some um, review and discussion with some of their staff. We're planning 
perhaps a tour to bring them into different areas of jurisdiction and maybe convince them that Yuba City could have $9 million. Uh, then um, I met with um, our city, uh, Yuba City. We have a homeless committee, uh, a, a really dynamic, great team. Um, we've come up with um, some different things that we want to present for the future for the council. Uh, about business tips, how to deal with homelessness in the areas of a specific zone areas because we, look, we looked at some data. Um, we are looking at um, identifying if there's repeat um, issues with certain communities who are homeless and um, that cleanup aspect of keep Yuba City clean. That was a conversation um, that came out of that committee as well. Uh, let's see, local community events, some of the fun stuff, all the other things I just mentioned is a lot of fun because if we can bring in um, infrastructure, more funding uh, for that, and if we can reduce homelessness in our business uh, area and just our community in general, all of that will help the quality of life of this community. We, I think the majority of us, I don't know, I, I know our vice mayor was there, um, attended the, the New Haven uh, court ribbon cutting. That was fun. Um, and then I also had the opportunity to keynote and speak um, and a member of the Alliance for Hispanic Advancement. It was their 29th um, student scholarship dinner. Uh, they handed out and our city manager was there. Um, thank you so much for being there. Uh, 21 scholars and athletes and their families were there. Um, also the Yuba Sutter County Board of Supervisors were there. Um, Dan Flores, Carbanes, um, uh, Chairman Bradford, uh, Vice Vice Board Chair, whatever his title is, Fletcher. We had several uh, Yuba City Unified School District Board members, and we also had the California Rice Commission who also attended. Um, the, another really great event and opening was that I think several of us attended the 40th Yuba Center Arts Culture Keys Party. Um, that's that's going to be a really cool event thing happening down. Plumas. I also attended the Western Farm Workers Association, their 35th, I believe it, 35 years uh, anniversary dinner at Peachtree Club. Uh, Peachtree Club actually um, gives that as a donation for free for the association. They bring in all the food um, product and they cook it and the chef cooks all the food specifically. That's part of their donation, which I think is a really wonderful uh, thing to help out our farm workers. And um, and then I was part of um, an event that our mayors uh, and I think our vice mayor is super close to um, the annual um, children's parade, and that was really fun. So had a good time on Fourth uh, of July. Made it back. I saw all the fireworks from Sacramento to Yuba City and Calusa, and I recognized that there are illegal fireworks, just like everyone else. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up is Council Member Kirchner. To the mayor. Thank you. It's been a long time since we've been here. At least it feels that way. So as um, Councilperson Espinola mentioned, um, I, I attended the, uh, the New Haven ribbon cutting as well. Being the new kid on the block, I didn't really have anything to do with that facility, but it was pretty amazing to see up close what it is. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, out of all the speeches that day, the one that meant the most to me was the woman who was formerly homeless, who got up to speak, and that's when it got real. So um, I'm really glad I, I took the time to go over there um, that day. Uh, on the 19th, I braved the, the heat and hit the summer stroll for probably about 20 minutes. <laughs> that's all I could take. <laughs> but it seems like it was well attended, so I'm glad. Um, the SASA, uh, Center Animal Services Authority. Uh, we passed a, a read on a budget, and we talked about all things chickens. And uh, it kind of ties back to what we talked about tonight, is our priorities, quality of life. And it turns out that uh, some of our businesses are having issues with that subject. And I think we, are, we will be remiss if we don't address that, because it ties in with... Uh, our business retention task force as, as well. So um, we're looking at uh, different uh, options to deal with that problem. 
Um, on the 23rd, I attended the active shooter training that was provided by um, Chief. Thank you, Chief, uh, for providing the service for that. Um, also attended the opening for the U.S. Center Fair, which it looks like uh, was a huge success this year. Um, I think I heard 1.3 million was raised from the auction, the livestock auction. 1.4, yeah. <laughs> Hearing some of the, the numbers that the the animals were coming in this year was just incredible. But it looks like it was really well attended. I helped out with uh, my Quanin group um, on the first night, and usually the the first night, as I can remember, really isn't that busy. But we certainly were, so it was great to see our community come out and support that. Um, on the fourth, I was out there at the uh, the parade. I didn't. I wasn't in the parade but I was out there listening to some great music provided by uh, our, our local mu musicians. And, um, oh, I backed uh, I'm back up on a third. On, on the way to the Gold Sox game, I was uh, asked to throw out the first pitch for the, uh, out at Peach Bowl uh, for their, it was the game before their championship game. It was the Peach Bowl against Sutter, and Peach Bowl won five to four. Um, and, uh, that's what I got. Back to you. All right. Councilmember Harris, please. All right, been a, as far as council goes, it's been pretty quick. I've been out of town for the most of the last two weeks. So I do want to uh, thank the mayor for attending SACOG in my absence. Uh, much appreciated. And, and uh, definitely very worthwhile. I did also intended you to set a fair opening, you would set her arts uh, and culture passing of the keys where we, we assumed um, ownership, if you will, of the former Sutter Theater. So we're expecting a lot of uh, very good things coming out of that venue, a um, lot of potential. Um, again, we're circling back to quality of life. It's going to be very unique and, uh, and a fun opportunity to uh, showcase our community. I, too, attended uh, active shooter training. I would happen to be online along with our city attorney, which was uh, much appreciated. Otherwise, I would not have been able to attend that. And that, due to my absence, has been pretty much it. Um, with the exception of one thing today, it's very apropos for being uh, recognizing at the beginning of this meeting sexual assault awareness. Um, and Casa de Esperanza, one service that I learned today in a meeting with Detective Rounds at the PD was that Casa also provides shelter for victims of human trafficking, not just domestic violence. I've learned quite a bit uh, recently and a lot, quite a bit more today from Detective Rounds regarding the prevalence um, of that tragedy in our community here locally and how it can be so present and right under your, your nose and we don't even know it. And so um, I've committed to do not stick my nose in their business, but to be a part of the effort to get education and awareness out to our community, kind of treat it like a um, like we did initially after 9-11. If you see something, say something. But people don't know what to say if they don't know what they're seeing. So I um, think that's important that we raise awareness and give specific examples as uh, the victims um, that are out there, uh, primarily female, but not necessarily, um, not necessarily even a, a sexual uh, um, assault that could be um, what amounts to human slavery. We're, we're working in um, domestic servants, if you will. So anyway, the list goes on and on. Bottom line is we have uh, fellow human beings victimizing other fellow human beings for their own personal gain, and that's unacceptable. So um, more to follow on that, at least I hope so, to um, get the word out and, and let's maybe stop it, not just help the people that are in it, but stop it from happening altogether. So thank you very much. And Chief, uh, publicly thank you to Mr. Uh, to Detective Rounds for that meeting today. Much appreciated. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, had several things going on uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, start with transit. Uh, transit Authority has uh, entered into contract with the property actually over in um, Yuba County for the new transit facility. Uh, that was uh, came together quick enough that they were actually able to apply for some grant funding because uh, our transit authority is needing $40 million to build a new state-of-the-art uh, facility. And uh, so um, I'm hoping that we have uh, final closure on that property uh, any day. 
and uh, we've you know partnered with them and part of what we did with regional housing authority on the uh, the new project they brought together with us all factors into some grants that they're able to apply for too it makes it uh, makes it even more attractive so uh, that's what's happening with transit um, SASA has reported earlier uh, past our budget um, you know right now just so people don't have any um, miss understanding with how we're addressing the uh, the chicken issue uh, there's a lot of education that has to go on first uh, probably the most important thing um, that uh, we've asked Mr. McIntyre to do is is help us educate people to understand it is a rumor and a myth that the chickens are protected in Yuba City uh, they're feral chickens and they're not protected even though I saw them on a campaign poster earlier this year <laughs> um, anyway it's uh, it worked yeah it's um, you know uh, we have to do something it's going to be a process but I don't want someone going out here tonight thinking suddenly chickens are going to be solved tomorrow we have to start with education and then at the same time we have to figure this out as a community a safe and humane way to relocate these animals or, or something of that nature so um, so that's what SAS is doing um, thank you mr. mayor for the honor to speak in your place at the uh, New Haven dedication um, very well uh, had the one lady speak as, as noted quite the facility uh, to RHA mr. Becerra um, good job on that uh, took some pictures it's amazing what they did with about 600 square feet to take these people from having uh, no home to actually being in there and uh, all the partners that came together just wasn't us Sutter County Yuba County uh, Marysville everybody pitched in so uh, good job there and thank you for the honor to speak uh, in your place um, the uh, business retention task force has been moving forward we did re uh, refine a questionnaire that is going out uh, to our businesses the first 50 uh, businesses have received it uh, and I believe mr. city manager that we have another 50 going out within the next week or so we're just gonna keep keep taking it a batch at a time to get a lot of useful information because the information we're after isn't you know the demographics of your business because we can get those from various other things but it's back to those driving questions what are we doing that's helping you what are we doing that's hurting you and what are we not doing that we should be doing so that we can ensure we're business friendly and, and going forward um, let's see like everybody else attended most everything that everybody else has active shooter the fair uh, thank you mr. mayor for your business as well sponsoring uh, the fair as well because they did have a uh, record year uh, almost 1.4 million in uh, livestock auction and all that money stays here in the local area with these kids so incredible job to Dave Dillaboo and the guys and ladies over there um, and really the 4th of July I uh, want to just say thank you to all of our city employees um, because you know we, we stated earlier with what was going on, on on the 4th of July evening that really tasked our PD and our fire departments but there was a lot of magic that happened that morning with the parade and those kids and it was our public works it was the fire department it was all the departments of the city were there and uh, police fire everybody and it creates something special and mr mayor thanks for starting that so many years ago when you're fire chief it uh it really is a great way to start uh the fourth of july day so um with that um that concludes my report thank you all right thanks a um, couple things. Thanks for covering the, the New Haven uh, discussion. Sorry, I missed that, but I, I know we had good representation, so um, that was great. I've had the opportunity to speak to a Qantas group. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Kirchner for that. Excellent questions. You know, speaking about outreach, probably need to do a little bit more of that. Um, super questions come from those groups, sort of an impromptu deal. You have a planned a planned speech, but boy, the questions start coming and you better be quick on your feet. And they're good questions. Um, also, uh, did a, a, at the beginning of some emergency preparedness talks that uh, the fire department's putting together a TED talk on emergency preparedness. So I appreciate those opportunities to start spreading the word about emergency preparedness. And I know that 
Council Member Espindola and I will, will be gearing up that emergency preparedness effort again. Uh, I do want to acknowledge the Sutter Performing Arts Association. We talked about the uh, Give Us Sutter Arts, but Sutter Performing Arts was really the people that got this theater thing going. And I believe it was back in 2007. John Toscano, uh, the late John Toscano, um, Russ Clark, uh, Susan Miller, Terry Tomlinson, really instrumental in uh, taking the, the theater to where it's at today. And I mentioned I had the opportunity to speak briefly you know, when I when I came in there as a fire chief, John Toscano said, "Hey, I've got this vision, and this theater was just a mess. Uh, and what it looks like today is just really awesome. And the Eva Sutter Arts and Culture Group, uh, I think, will probably uh, not probably they will very much likely turn this thing into a real asset for us down on Pluma Street. Uh, I do want to continue the opportunity to recognize um, uh, Terry Thomason, Susan Miller." Uh, Russ Clark and uh, Nancy Toscano, if we can get her to at a council meeting for the efforts on the theater. Uh, really, really strong work there. Um, the, at the Eva Sutter Fair, just real quick, Dave Dillaboo and that group, um, you know, it was nice to have a corn dog um, and, and walk around the place. It was really well attended. And, and you know, I don't know all the, all the, uh, the final finals on stats and everything, but everything sounds really good. Another community event that I think uh, speaks well to quality of life, of course. A um, couple things I want to speak of. The, in the parade, you mentioned the parade. Everyone's mentioned the parade. Parade started in 2002. And it was a joint effort, fire department, police department, and parks and rec. And I really want to uh, make sure that um, Jessica Peters gets recognition. She, she's a person uh, that was there at Ground Zero at the parade start. Uh, doing a lot of logistics, um, and you know that's that's not easy. Hurting a lot of council people, plus a lot of kids and parents and bikes and wagons and everything. And her and the youth commission did a really nice job on a kickoff down there. And then as you move down the street, uh, the Ubisutter Symphony uh, playing away was you know it's just very a very good feel. Um, and as uh, the vice mayor said, we had a lot of representatives from a lot of departments. I also recognized Lowe's and Clean Right Build Right. They were uh, they were also helping at the parade. You know, this was the 18th year. You know, hopefully uh, we can continue this thing for going and going on and on and on. I do think it's a great asset. As for fireworks, uh, it was aw awesome to bring that back again. You know, one of the intended uh, intended things was to, to diminish the illegal fireworks. I'm not sure that that's been a success so far, but the the fact that we have this event in our community again after about a 16 year um, hiatus. And I would really like to uh, shout out to my, uh, my colleague, our colleague, Brad Hudson from the Marysville City Council. Uh, Marysville really stepped up this year. You know, as you know, we weren't sure whether we were going to be able to have people down in Riverfront Park. Uh, and Nicole Moe from the City of Marysville also um, stepped up. And uh, we had uh, sponsors of Yuba City, Sutter County, Yuba County, Marysville, Hilvers, Yuba Water Agency, Recology, Cal Water all, all stepped in. Uh, this year to uh, help put that show on. I will give you a hint that because of the the original plan for this was to turn this into a real community event down in Riverfront Park where you could have uh, more of a festival type of an atmosphere where the amphitheaters used and, you know, food trucks and all that. You know, that year one we got up and going. It was took us, we had about two months to get it going, if I remember correctly. And then, of course, last year was COVID, and then this year we didn't, weren't sure whether we were going to have it again. But we, we've already started the discussions for next year, uh, and, and I think we'll bring it bigger. And hopefully not only will it be a better show, um, but it will also perhaps have the, uh, the, uh, the intended consequence of maybe helping with the, uh, the illegal fireworks. Finally, um, to police and fire on the July 4th, um, I, I know how difficult that is, and uh, the men and women of of the law enforcement and uh, the folks at the Yuba City Fire Department, um, you know, they, they, they get a bum rap. You know, you, you heard it here tonight that they didn't do enough, but I know darn well that they are out there doing the very best that they can. Uh, and we will continue to try to figure out how to deal with illegal fireworks. Finally, this evening, I'd like to close in memory of Teresa Helberg. Uh, those of you who know um, former or know of former mayor uh, Eric Helberg, this was his wife. Teresa was a fixture in the community, very community oriented uh, in her passing. Um, I'd like to, to, like I said, close this meeting tonight in memory of her. Um, and with that, we'll be complete.